I've been writing blog posts for a couple of years now. They tend to be about numerical methods or uh, scientific programming. But by far the most popular one was how to calculate the implied volatility of an option given its price. Um, and we're going to be using Python for this. So I thought I would just essentially take that blog post and recast it into a video format just to see if uh, people are interested. So let's get started. So here's the Black-Scholes model. Uh, we have the equations for the price of a call, price of a put. C and P are the prices of the uh, call and put respectively. S is the stock price, K is the strike price. You could just read down the things here. T is the time to expiration. Uh, sigma is what we're interested in. That's our implied volatility. We're going to be interested in calculating that. Uh, phi is the cumulative distribution function. Um, it's the normal cumulative distribution function. If you don't know what the cumulative distribution function is, uh, it's not really important for this this presentation. Uh, just consider it some function where you send in a numerical argument and it, and it spits out spits out a number. The models are often written in this form here, with the arguments of the uh, the distribution functions being defined down here. Um, this is just for the sake of compactness and readability, but you can consider this to be one one equation for the call price and one equation for the put price uh, if you want. It's just again, it's just kind of typical to write it in this this fashion. Prices of the options are known. They're given to you by the trading platform. That's what would actually you know pay or receive a credit if we buy or sell the sell the option. So that's known. So the only thing we don't know in this equation is the implied volatility. The issue here is going to be actually calculating sigma. You just can't rearrange these equations algebraically to pop out a value. So how we're going to approach this? Uh, we're going to take the Black-Scholes uh, model here and set that equal to the call price that we actually get off of our option chain, then rearrange the equation like this. So we have Black-Scholes model minus actual call price equals zero. So we want to find a value of sigma that actually sets this equal to zero. So here I have an example plot uh, here where I've swept, uh, let's get rid of this bar off of the bottom here. Come on, go away. There we go. Where I've swept sigma from zero to one, so zero percent to a hundred percent implied volatility, um, and plotted this function here, this uh, this here is a function of, of sigma. So that's this equation here. So we want to find the value of sigma where this thing crosses zero, which is right about here, or say 30, 38, 37 percent implied volatility. And just to generate this plot, uh, I used the, I just used some dummy uh, numbers, kind of realistic, you know, made up realistically off of the top of my head, you know, uh, took the call price to be $2.50, $2 uh, stock price 100 bucks, strike price, and, you know, you could just read this off, <clears throat> excuse me, read those off here. As I've already said, you can't uh, you can't solve for sigma algebraically, but it can be done by uh, computer. It can be done numerically. Um, a very crude uh, way to do this would just be to take the code I used to plot out these data points here, sweep your sigma values along, calculating this function here until you get close enough to zero to call it good enough, and then just call it quits. Uh, we could do that, but we're going to be a little cleverer and uh, more computationally efficient and solve it uh, using something called uh, Newton's method, or also called the uh, newton raphson method. In numerical methods, these techniques are commonly called root-finding algorithms. As an example, let's take something uh, pretty simple, a parabola. f of x is equal to x squared minus 9, and let's just restrict ourselves to x greater than 0 for now. Uh, easy to solve the root, uh, easy to find the root of this, just solve for x, um, x is equal to 3 obviously. In some ways the Black-Scholes model is a little bit easier in that there's only one root, uh, in this case there are two, which is why I specified x greater than 0. So the idea behind Newton's algorithm is pretty simple. You make a guess for the root, in this case I'm just going to pick x equals 4, and you evaluate the derivative at that point which gives you the slope of the tangent line that x equals 4. You have the uh, slope, you have the, a point, therefore you can der uh, derive the equation of a line that passes through that point. And that's you know drawn, drawn schematically here. So here's our line that's tangent to that point at x equals 4. We find where it crosses the um, x-axis. <clears throat> In this case, this happens to be uh, 3.125, and we use that as the guess for our next iteration of the loop. So plug uh, you know, evaluate the derivative at 3.125, you know, and just kind of repeat this process until you get some, um, until it converges to some desired tolerance. So uh, in this case, it converges pretty quickly. I showed you the um, 
after two iterations, uh, this yellow line is the, the next iteration here, and it's already uh, pretty damn close to um, x equals 3. And I've just run this through a spreadsheet here, starting with an initial guess of 4. Um, if you, you know, plug 4 into our equation, you get y equals 8. You calculate the derivative uh, at 4, you get 2. You get this x-intercept, you know, plug this in for the next iteration, and so on. You get this, this, and after 3 to 4 iterations, you're already converged to whatever the numerical precision I have the spreadsheet set to display at. So this works, um, this converges pretty quickly. One final thing before we actually begin coding. Uh, going back to the Black-Scholes model here, we actually need to calculate the derivative of this. We're going to just focus on call options for the coding section. need to uh, calculate the derivative of a call price with respect to volatility. And that's not something that's... Uh, it's not hard to do, but it's not something I'd particularly want to do. Fortunately for us, the derivatives of these uh, prices are commonly, um, <clears throat> commonly used in, in option trading, and they're referred to as the Greeks because uh, they're typically den denoted by Greek uh, Greek letter alpha, gamma, or whatever. The implied volatility, uh, derivative of the price with respect to implied volatility, for whatever reason, um, is denoted by the Greek letter nu, right here. Let's wait for this thing to vanish again. Uh, and for some reason, instead of calling it nu, they call it vega. So I'm just going to keep the their convention and refer to it as vega. And it's simple. Uh, it's a simple expression. It's just given right here. It's the stock price um, <coughs> times the square root of uh, days to expiration times the um, a little phi here is the. It's not the um, cumulative function. It's the uh, density function, normal probability density function of the variable d1. So. It's a simple expression to calculate vega. So we have our derivative, we have the function we want to minimize, uh, not minimize, we want to uh, find the root of. So we're all set to actually begin coding this. We are, uh, I'm going to do this in slightly a bit of an old-fashioned way here. I'm just going to open a text editor, uh, VIM in this case, write the code, and then just run the code from a console window. Uh, let's import some basic math functionality here. You know, the things that we're going to need, square roots, sine, not sine, pi, log, that type of thing. Uh, the only thing that doesn't come standard with Python that we're going to use is a um, the uh, normal distribution functions from scipy. So let's go from scipy.stats um, import norm. So there we go. So now let's write a function that uh, calculates the values of d1 and d2. And I'm going to keep the same format I use in the blog post, so let's just go into insert mode, write this uh, function. It takes the arguments that are given in the earlier slides and just calculates the values. There's nothing particularly um, special going on here. It just executes those formulas and spits out the answer. So let's uh, test this really quickly to make sure it's working. Um, in my example earlier, I set the stock price equal to 100, the strike price equal to 105. Um, the time to expiration is 30 days, but this has to be in years, so it's through 30 days over 365 days to put it into years. And then the risk-free rate was 0 0.01, so 1% um, interest rate. Now let's print, and we'll just put this in, in here. Uh, print. And let's get rid of that um, colon. And we're going to need to put in a value for sigma here just for the sake of um, something. So let's just put in point 15. Save that. Let's go to the uh, console and uh, run it. There we go. It's working. So now let's uh, go back. That's not where I want. What do I want? I want this. <clears throat> so let's um, delete that. We can keep these things and let's put in the uh, actual function for the call price now. So the call price is also pretty straightforward. We'll just create another function here. Um, there we go. So it's basically the you know the, the formula that was given on the slide one or two. Pretty straightforward. So let's again test this out um, and see what we get. Let's see, let's go down, print, um, 
let's just go back up here copy that go down here put get rid of that colon uh, we need a d1 and d2 so let's also go um, let's see <clears throat> let's just copy this down here print not print put let's see d1 comma d2 equals this we're going to get rid of this uh, colon we're going to set sigma again to point um, point one five so we'll come down here again change that and let's see that should calculate our call price so let's go to our console window run there we go 29 cents according to black scholes model for those parameters okay let's get rid of these now um, we're going to set the call price equal to 2.30. I think that's what I said in the, um, in the, uh, earlier slides. So we're going to set up some variables for bookkeeping purposes. Uh, let's set some sort of tolerance and that equal to, for the not, for the time being, let's do a 10 to the minus 3. Um, so 1%. So this will be what we, uh, one of our stopping criteria. We're going to set, uh, another variable epsilon which will also which will be the actual percent change of our um, implied volatility estimate from one iteration to the other right now we'll just set that equal to one just um, so we can start our loop let's also create a variable called count set it equal to zero um, that's just for bookkeeping purposes we could also set something like a variable called max iter and we'll set that equal to 1000 um, just so that this thing, for some reason, if it runs, you know, into a problem, it won't go into some infinite loop. We'll put in some sort of stopping, stopping criteria. Cool. Let's clean this up a bit. Let's move this up here. We'll call this. We'll just label this as um, option, option parameters. We'll just put this as uh, toler tolerances. Now, let's see. The bulk of this is going to be done in a uh, while loop, or all of it's going to be done in a while loop. So, while our epsilon variable, epsilon, I can spell, is greater than tau. <clears throat> so, the epsilon is the percent change from iteration to iteration, and the tau is the very, uh, tolerance we set, I think, uh, is 10 to the minus 3 or 0.1%. So, let's begin the while loop. And let's just iterate uh, the count variable, count plus equals count. And let's put in our stopping criteria here for like a runaway loop. So if count greater than or equal to max iter, let's uh, print breaking on count or something like that. Doesn't quite matter. Break. <clears throat> so if we actually run this now, it should break because it's not doing anything except for uh, counting up the loop. So let's just close this. Let's go to our console here and run the code. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's see. Let's go back here. Count equal plus equal count. Print count. It's not iterating count. Did I spell it wrong? I probably spelled it wrong. Oh, plus equal count is probably plus equal one, obviously. Uh, the joys of coding live. Yeah, breaking on count. Good. Let's go back to the uh, text editor. One thing I forgot here is we're going to need to have a variable uh, for the volatility, so let's just call it vol. And we need an initial guess, so let's just put that equal to 50%. Um, that's just to get everything started. And we're going to need a variable, let's just call it a ridge vol, that just holds a copy of the uh, the volatility, vol volatility for that iteration. So this is going to be um, how we calculate the percent change from iteration to iteration. 
So now that that's done, um, <clears throat> we can start calculating things. So we're going to need to calculate D1, D2, and then the call price given all these parameters. So let's see, how did I call, how did I build this function here? So let's just, um, let's just copy this and go D1 comma D2 equals, and it's not sigma here, it's vowel. So that's good. Um, now we're going to need the call price. So let us go back up here. We're going to copy this. And let's just do it all at one time. So we're going to create a variable called function value. And that's going to be equal to the call price. Again, this is going to be vowel instead of sigma. D1 and D2 are from here. And this is the function we're actually finding the root of. So it's the call price as defined by Black-Scholes minus our variable C0. So this is, the, uh, this is what we're actually looking for here. And let's just save it. So the next thing we're going to need is the derivative. So that's just uh, our vega. So let's just go in here and through the magic of copy and paste, I'll just paste in this formula. So that's it. Uh, we're ready to update our volatility. So our new vol is going to be equal, be equal to minus r function value divided by vega. And you should probably um, plus vol probably do some sort of check to make sure that that vega is not zero. But I'm just going to uh, ignore that here. So that's it. Now we're ready to move on to tolerances and making, uh, determine what, determining whether or not we should stop this uh, iteration loop. So let's do that. So that's just the variable epsilon. Epsilon. And we're going to use the absolute value here. Um, so what is our percent change of this thing? So it's going to be vol minus, I believe I called it a ridge vol. And let's divide this by uh, a ridge vowel. And let's spell it right because that kind of helps. And that should be it. And I have an additional i over here that I need to get rid of. Now, um, yeah, let's just see how this runs uh, as is. So let's go to our console window. Oops, I have it set up for Python. Boom. Python fine vowel. Okay, so it seems to be uh, up and running. So let's just go down here and print vowel. And let's actually wrap this in parentheses. There we go. That's it. Uh, so we should just clean up this code a little bit and maybe add something like. Uh, just add some text here. Uh, sigma equals, and let's delete that and put it here, and print code took count iterations. There we go. And so we have a volatility at about 37% uh, according to those numbers that we gave it. Okay, the last thing I want to do here is try this out on some uh, real stock market data. It is mid-morning on a Tuesday when I'm actually recording this. So uh, the stock market is open. We can actually test out this code with, with live information. So let's just copy and paste this in here. Oops, wrong button. Control V. Okay. So, somewhere on here I have an actual trading platform running. Um, <clears throat> here I have an Apple stock, which I have a position in, option position. So let's calculate the implied volatility of this 210 call right here. So, stock price, uh, strike price is going to be 210. 
the actual stock price is where it's about 194.11 right now. So let's go back here. 194.11. Let's just make sure this is a uh, float here. I don't know quite what the risk-free rate is. I'm just going to keep it at 1% um, for now. Let's see. How many days until expiration is this? This is given right here. Oh, I can't see it. 38 days. 38 days. 38 and... The actual price of the call is, let's see, let's just call it a buck fifty. Let's see what happens when we run it. So it comes up with an implied volatility of about 25.2%. Let's see what the trading platform says. Um, 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 um. What do I have it set up for? I already have implied volatility up here, and this platform says 25.1%. So what was my number again? 25.2%. Close enough. Well, that took longer than I thought. I was hoping to keep this around 10 minutes, but we're obviously well over 20 at this point. So I will call it quits. And in the meantime, I will clean up the code a little bit, write some comments, and upload it to uh, GitHub. The link will be down below. Thanks guys.